All right. Hopefully, when you analyze the chart, you some things jump, jumped out to your attention, right? You look at the population, okay, uh, which is 90-something percent, which falls into that third estate category, which are the commoners. You can also see right here the division of land ownership. But I think the thing that hopefully caught your attention most significantly is the concept of government taxation, right? Looking at this chart, which hopefully you take a look at, 2003, so that should trigger, okay, we're looking at a secondary source document. But looking at the pie graph, you can see that 100% of the taxation falls on that third estate category. So keeping in mind that the people at the top, right, the clergy, as well as the nobility, the people that have land and money and title and power, they pay zero dollars and zero cents in taxes which is an issue, right? Because we are also introducing that France is going through economic problems. So how are you supposed to collect money when you're trying to tax, um, tax the people at the bottom have less money? You can also see the frustration, right? If you are bourgeoisie, which is that middle-class bracket smushed down in that third estate category of how you feel that maybe perhaps you're working hard or your business, right? And you see other elements in society where people with all this money, they don't have to pay anything. So let's do another activity in this case. I will have you set up in your notebook. Um, you know, let's do a little one, two, three, and we'll also play with this observation. Okay, I'm going to break this. So I'm going to look at a visual source in this case. Now, this is a, a primary source. But I'm going to break it down in three categories. So don't cheat. Don't go through the process. Okay. Try to, you know, play the game as I like to say in class. Okay. So looking at the first slide, I want you to jot down um, just what you see. We'll just start there. Just your observations. Just visually kind of what catches your attention in slide one. Okay, same process. Take a look at slide two. See what catches your attention. Objects, placement, clothing. Okay, slide three. See if you can notice objects, positioning, shading body positioning. Okay, and let's look at the image as an entirety. So if you look at this, you can see this is a um, political cartoon, right? It's definitely getting you to think or feel or react in certain ways. And you analyze the cartoon there, you can see that for the most part, right, if you had to sort of, you know, link up estates, this is a representation of how the third estate um, feels like maybe they're carrying the weight or that they are chained to or they're being strangled blindly in this case. Why, again, um, the members of the upper estates, right, they kind of sit fat and happy, right? You can see the, the, the dress and the clothing you can also see, again, the hat, which represents the clergy in that case. Um, so there's lots of things we can just look at this cartoon, right? Cartoons are fun primary sources to, like, take a look at because it gets you definitely, I mean, I think analyze this image gets you a stronger sense of what the people of France are feeling or experiencing with that inequality in French society. All right. Let's go ahead and read some more um, sources in this case. So I'm, we're going to go over some slides in this case, and I would like you to read documents. Choose one piece of evidence and to demonstrate why the people of France want to change. And I gave you some, some categories, right? At this time, we're kind of categorizing, right, enlightenment influence, looking at weak leadership of the king at the time, which is King Louis XVI, the economic problems within France, and also estate or the class inequality. All right, so let's take a look at document A in this case. Um, so this source is taken, um, which is June 10th, 1789. The lack of bread is terrible. Stories arrive every moment from the provinces of riots and disturbances and the calling in the military to preserve the peace of the markets. The price of bread has risen above the people's ability to pay. 
This causes great misery. Okay, document B, July 12, 1789. Walking up a long hill to ease my mar, I was joined by a poor woman who complained of the times and said that it was a sad country. Demanding her reason, she said that her husband had but a small plot of land, one cow, and a poor little horse. Yet they had to pay a tax of 42 pounds of wheat and three chickens to one noble and 168 pounds of oats, one chicken, and one sow to another. The tax and the laws are crushing us. This woman at no great distance might have been taken for 60 or 70. Her figure was so bent and her face was so wrinkled and hardened by labor, but she said she was only 28. Right? Document C, this one is from a lecture on the French Revolution, written in 1895. The condition of France alone did not bring about the overthrow of the monarchy, for the suffering of the people was not greater than they had been before. The ideas of the Enlightenment philosophers were not directly responsible for the outbreak, but the spark that changed thought into action was supplied by the Declaration of American Independence. The American example caused the revolution to break out. Where do they come from? Who gets to make decisions for others? And on what authority? And how can we organize society to meet people's needs? These questions challenged an entire nation during the upheaval of the French Revolution. By the end of the 18th century, Europe had undergone a profound intellectual and cultural shift known as the Enlightenment. Philosophers and artists promoted reason and human freedom over tradition and religion. The rise of a middle class and printed materials encouraged political awareness, and the American Revolution had turned a former English colony into an independent republic. Yet France, one of the largest and richest countries in Europe, was still governed by an ancient regime of three rigid social classes called estates. The monarch, King Louis XVI, based his authority on divine right and granted special privileges to the first and second estates, the Catholic clergy and the nobles. The third estate, middle-class merchants and craftsmen, as well as over 20 million peasants, had far less power and they were the only ones who paid taxes, not just to the king, but to the other estates as well. In bad harvest years, taxation could leave peasants with almost nothing, while the king and nobles lived lavishly on their extracted wealth. But as France sank into debt due to its support of the American Revolution and its long-running war with England, change was needed. King Louis appointed finance minister Jacques Necker who pushed for tax reforms and won public support by openly publishing the government's finances. But the king's advisors strongly opposed these initiatives. Desperate for a solution, the king called a meeting of the Estates General, an assembly of representatives from the three estates. For All right, I think I'm going to pause it right there. All right, with that being said, this will wrap up our at least our barely introduction. There are some other resources and videos we'll take a look at for this week. At this point, again, I want you to think about one piece of evidence that you can take specifically to the boards, um, the discussion post for this week. I want to remind you one of the assignments this week is also revising your um, DBQ documents. So do please make sure, for example, if you are citing a piece of evidence for document A, make sure you do cite that in quotation marks and the citation will go at the end, parentheses document A. All right, so we'll go ahead and pause it here for today, and we'll continue our discussion on the French Revolution. Change is coming. I'll see you on the board.